we need to wait for the live stream. This event is live streamed on the Ozone Secretariat um, YouTube channel. Ah, yes. For those who cannot hear well, you can use the headphones that, that are here available. Please do. And we'll just wait for the OK to start. so we have some internet issues as you may have noticed just waiting for the connection <laughs> greetings everyone thank you for joining uh, today today's event uh, so this uh, event is organized by UNDP Chemicals and Waste Hub and uh, will be touching on sustainable cooling like all the events uh, uh, these two weeks in, in this uh, Montreal Protocol Pavilion uh, organized by the Ozone Secretariat. So it's quite a historic moment for us uh, because it's the first time uh, the cooling uh, hub of, uh, I mean, chemicals and waste and cooling hub of UNDP is organizing a side event at the Climate Cup. So I think it uh, uh, demonstrates these uh, uh, two treaties and two um, subjects joining hands and showing uh, interest to each other uh, and the, the benefits that can be <coughs> gathered. So thank you to the Ozone Secretariat for coordinating uh, this uh, pavilion, first time uh, pavilion at the Climate Cup. So <coughs> the side event will be talking particularly about private sector. At UNDP, we've been working with private sector over uh, more than three decades on, on working on improving uh, the performance of, of cooling, both in terms of refrigerant management, energy efficiency, and generally contributing to, uh, to climate. So um, we've called the, the event Green Transition in Private Sectors for Sustainable Cold Chain and Space Cooling. And uh, uh, we have actually participants from many companies that uh, are very active in the Montreal Protocol community that we've been working on as implementing agencies of the Montreal Protocol over the years. Uh, some of them have come and joined today. Others are connected uh, on, on the Internet. Uh, and we will have also a pre few pre-recorded videos to play um, uh, along this one hour together in this event. And uh, we will have here in, in the room Yang Tai Moon from China, that, uh, so the company will present just in uh, actually a few minutes. And we will also have uh, Subros from India presenting about the mobile air conditioning uh, program in particular. Uh, and uh, I will introduce the online speakers as well as, we, as they join. We have a lot of companies that are joining as well online. Um, <coughs> Uh, that that uh, will, will present their work, particularly on natural refrigerants. To start the event and uh, introduce the topic, I would like to invite the director of the Chemicals and Waste Hub, uh, Mrs. Chao Feng Tzu, uh, who will uh, introduce, give us a few words of introduction. Please, Chao Feng. Uh, thank you, Etienne, dear colleague, friends, and the uh, participants uh, virtually. Welcome to the event of a Green Transition of Private Sector for Sustainable Coaching and also for Space Cooling during the COP28 in Dubai. This is a vital moment for the global community to come together uh, to push for actions against climate change. As we observed and we felt, the temperature record has been repeatedly are uh, broken and putting this year as the hottest year on record. 
so we have no time to waste to take action. The cooling is essential for the human health, for the food security, for the economy and sustainability. You know, however, it's also a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emission through direct emission of the high global warming refrigerant, but also the indirect emission uh, about the electricity consumption. Um, you know, thanks to the Montreal Protocol, the chemicals that uh, deplete uh, the ozone and also warm the climate has been phasing out. We are really on track to phase out all of the HCFCs by end of the 2030, and we move into a new phase to phase down HFCs starting uh, from the early next year in developing countries. So we are also the hope that uh, uh, those HFC phase down could be, you know, accelerated with available technology because. You know, currently we have more confidence that uh, we have most, in most cooling applications, we have the technology available. And what we need now is to accelerate the market penetration of the green technology. The private sector pre plays a very significant role in the green transition and also, you know, practice social and environment uh, responsibility while doing the business that helps us turn a healthy economy and society towards a sustainable development. According to the IEA, International Aid Energy Agency, the proving and often cost-effective technology of the low emission, such as the renewable power, energy efficiency, electric vehicles, and heat pump, could together deliver more than 80% of the reduction needed by end of the 2030, more than 80% all of the technology relevant to the cooling sector and industries. So cooling sector has a lot of opportunity to advance climate-friendly solutions. Engaging and supporting the private sector in developing countries on their green transition is one of the key factors on the success of the Montreal Protocol. Today, we have champions in the private sector from the world to speak their innovations and their willingness to fighting for the ozone layer depletion and also the climate change. So transitioning to natural refrigerant, highly efficient smart cooling products as well as those system solutions coupled with renewable energy and also integrated heating and cooling solu solutions such as district cooling. So we believe this you know, innovation and story will inspire more companies in the world to take actions to address the crisis we are facing together. So we are optimistic that cooling sector could deliver remarkable impact to mitigate the climate change. So thanks again for your attention and for your support. So I over to Etienne for the next session of the event. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Xiaofeng. So we will start uh, with uh, our first speaker uh, who is in the room with us. Uh, and this, this is Mr. Lin Tang, uh, who is Deputy Director of the Overseas Department at Yangtai Moon uh, in China, and uh, particularly with uh, specializing in very large industrial installations, as you will see, and that can, we, will pre uh, we will present the uh, efforts towards natural refrigerants by this company. Please, Mr. Tang.
Good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for uh, attending here, and thank for UNDP give us the chance, the chance to, and it's my great honor to stand here to share our topic, uh, One Earth, One Family, uh, Green Transmission of Sustainable and Natural Refrigerant Development in China in the Framework of the Mon uh, Montreal Proto Protocol. Uh, first, uh, please allow me to uh, introduce our company, yes, uh, Mo Environment Technology Competitive. We uh, set up since 1956. Uh, right now, after 60, 67 years developed, now it's already become the China's largest energy serving service provider for intelligent green energy systems. And we totally have uh, 6,000 workers and uh, 10 over for $1.3 billion. And you can see there's many in the, uh, the branch, uh, very companies. They are doing the logistics, intelligence, uh, economical equipment for the pressure vessels, for the heat changers, for central air conditionings. Uh, and also for the intelligent uh, service automatically control. Then, uh, introduction for our service network. Right now we have the nine industry parks around the world and our headquarters in Yantai in China. Uh, we, have, uh, f we have four industry parks in Yantai. It's uh, our headquarters uh, in Leishan, uh, industrial Park and uh, Guxian Industrial Park and uh, Duhan Bush uh, Industrial Park. Then overseas we have four Industrial Park. Is they are all in USA, UK, uh, Malaysia, and uh, Vietnam. So as already our we have the cover 120 countries enjoy our service. So the next phase for introduction for our wide. Thermal production chain with ec uh, ecological refrigerant. From this page, you can see uh, from minor 271 until the plant 200 degrees is all in our business field. Yes, uh, minor 271 we are using uh, uh, hydrogen hydrogen expansion refrigeration, and uh, then for the pressures from the zero up to 90 90 MPa. We are using the diaphragm, diaphragm compressor. So, the, especially for today's, I introduced for our ammonia and uh, carbon dioxide uh, cascade system. Its range should, uh, the range is from minor 25 to minor 55. So, So we will build an interconnection and uh, comprehensive system of wireless energy source such as cooled heat, water, gas, electricity, pollution, and waste to realize e uh, ele electrologic space in a wide temperature range of minus 271 degrees to plus 200 degrees and a pressure range of 0 to 90 MPa and dedicate ourselves to improving the quality of human life. And all the above methods use natural refrigerant uh, such as ammonia, carbon dioxide, HCF. Next for low carbon technology, direct carbon dioxide capture, store, or reuse. For CCUS, for carbon capture, utilization, and storage, it's an industry process in which carbon dioxide is separated from the source or emission and or is directly used or sequestered to reduce the emissions. And uh, currently, uh, the complete carbon reduction from ice, CO2, personalization, and liquefaction protected by Montech is about uh, 8 million tons already. For the special actions include developing refrigerant replacement technology to reduce the damage to the uh, atmosphere caused by the HCFC refrigerant with ground support by UNDP. 
So they have the, the safety, have environmental protection, efficiency, and sustainability. So uh, the reduced HCF damage to the asthetosphere by developing natural refrigerant replacement technology. In 2011, Montec carried out the first series of HCFC conversion demonstration project in China. R22 to ammonia carbon dioxide cascade refrigeration system replacement demonstration project for freezing and cooled storage. The project was success, uh, successfully accepted in 2013, and in 2012, Montec carried out two uh, demonstration projects for Zunco and uh, We Had Jiu, Jiu Yu, which were awarded by the Ministry of Environmental Protection of China as R22 replacement projects. These projects use the ammonia CO2 cascade refrigeration system to replace the two stage. R22 compression uh, refrigerant system in the minus 20, uh, 35 to minus 55 temperature range in the refrigeration and freezing sectors. The project will complete the conversion and the modification of the equipment and achieve an annual phase out of 250 tons of R22. In April 2016, Montec carried out the replacement of R22 screw single stage refrigeration system with ammonia CO2 to carrier refrigeration system for refrigeration freezing. Converse project and successfully passed the acceptance in 2017. Under the European temperature minus 15 to minus 35, Working conditions, the ammonia CO2 screw secondary refrigeration system is used to replace the R22 single stage compressor system, while they used in the industry and the phase out of 380 tons of R22 per year can be achieved. Within the implementation of the three projects, 1,221 tons of R22 consumption can be phased out annually, resulting in a CO2 reduction of 3.4 million tons. Uh, this is photos is for the the before so the ozone lawyer protection uh, model project award. That is it should be in the year twenty twenty fourteen. For our future works, uh, there's a wide thermal product chain with uh, ecological refrigerant. You can see that photo is for our. Uh, hydrogen uh, compressor for the high pressure hydrogen compressors for the oil lubricated hydrogen transport compressor the fuel cell air compressor fuel cell hydrogen uh, circulation pump the future system will be out look like that and exactly already part of them we are already uh, in we are already done and in the our business project uh, acceptance already development and the use of the solar system in refrigeration areas. So focus on the development and the use of clean energy, Montec has successfully developed equipment to solve the problem of the hydrogen storage and the transportation. Uh, meanwhile, we have adopted solar energy to the field of refrigeration, successfully realizing the conversion Uh, now expanding with expanding the low carbon industries in the war uh, in the world in low carbon technologies promoting low carbon manufacturing building building low carbon chains creating a low carbon culture and improving low carbon services here will be the all the mode of what we can share for the low carbon industrials even for our low carbon cultures to change our uh, behavior, the low carbon services, low carbon chain. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that is beyond just temperature. Yeah, thank you for.
uh, of course, are my topic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, and uh, Mr. Ling Tang will stay around. So if you have any questions, I know we won't have much time at the end of, of the session uh, for, for questions. But uh, please use the time for um, uh, interactions after it. Now we are changing continents and we are going to Latin America and more specifically to Chile and uh, even more specifically to a small island, uh, Easter Island, w which you are probably familiar with. Uh, and we will hear uh, how natural refrigerants have been promoted on the island uh, with um, our technical expert, Mr. Pierre Zecchetto, who has been working um, with the National Ozone Unit and with companies, supermarkets in Chile to promote natural refrigerants.
100 countries with over 40,000 uh, employees in the world. And it's a family-owned company still uh, founded in 1933. Uh, the next slide, please. So what I'd like to talk about today is um, uh, our integrated energy system, and more specifically, um, the Danfoss um, Application Development Center um, related to a smart store supermarket, which is on our um, headquarters uh, campus, or next to our headquarters campus. And as you can see on this slide here, the idea is, um, or what we are doing there, is in a, in a decarbonization approach, linking uh, many different applications with each other and benefiting, for example, using the waste heat from our, connecting that waste heat uh, to the grid, using it to heat uh, our office buildings, but also um, feeding what is remaining into, into the district energy network which will then uh, heat uh, the building. So the idea is really to connect everything together and to make best use of the synergies between those different applications, which of course at the end of the day um, makes us uh, save a lot of energy, a lot of cost, um, and also uh, reduce emissions very significantly as, as a matter of fact, um, uh, carbon neutral since the end of last year. Um, if you move to the next uh, slide, please. So as said, um, this presentation is about um, our smart store uh, and application development center. So what this is, is a supermarket, a normal supermarket, uh, which combines all of the late energy efficiency and that includes monitoring and management uh, devices uh, and equipment, but also controls, um, sustainable refrigeration, it's running on CO2, and a fully integrated system, which among others also um, uses um, or is based on, uh, on the heat recovery um, feature. And what is really interesting here is, uh, is that this store is 50% uh, more energy efficient than a typical supermarket which uses first generation CO2 refrigeration system. So this one takes it even one step further and uh, is even um, more energy efficient, of course, bringing together all of those different technologies. Next slide, please. So just a word um, on the refrigerants. So that store, um, which basically, as I was saying, is a normal supermarket, but adjacent to the supermarket is our application development center, where all of the technologies that are used in that supermarket can be seen live and in action. So it's really about seeing is believing. It's not a theoretical exercise. It's really running there um, uh, every day, pulling the supermarket and providing these very energy efficient uh, solutions. Then it's also an opportunity, together with our customers, to further develop um, together um, solutions um, that increase energy efficiency and decarbonize. CO2 refrigeration here is the preferred option for that supermarket. Um, and as you can see on the, the, on the graph, um, it is highly, highly efficient, taking CO2 technology to the next level combining different features like um, the CO2 booster system, but then also a parallel system with the uh, liquid ejector, um, really taking the CO2 efficiency to the next uh, level, which makes it also suitable and very energy efficient for regions with higher ambient temperatures. Bearing in mind that the choice of the refrigerant also always needs to be done depending on the circumstances, on the application, safety, energy efficiency, and uh, of course also the environment and, and the affordability. So it's always uh, tailored to uh, the place uh, where you are. And the next slide, please. As I was saying, um, in that supermarket we also use heat recovery. Um, heat recovery is a very hot topic, literally speaking. Um, because it allows us to use um, the excess or the waste heat uh, from cooling systems here and uh, to use that heat directly uh, either on site and that can be done for example for heating the supermarket but also for heating the water which is needed uh, in the supermarket 
but it can also be connected to a district energy grid, fed into the district energy grid, and then heat um, the buildings which are connected to the grid. So there is a huge opportunity um, to, uh, to save energy because the heat which can be reused, recycled, if I can say so, like that, doesn't need to be produced in the first place. And that means a lot of energy savings, it means a lot of emission savings, and it means a lot of cost savings. Um, just as an example, which is taken from our white paper, there is in Europe alone 2,860 terawatt hours per year, which could be used and which would be uh, almost enough um, to cover the EU's total energy demand for heat and hot here. And the uh, last slide, please. What is also very special about that supermarket and can be perfectly duplicate to other um, supermarkets of the energy as a service model. So that means um, that the supermarket owner can basically concentrate on the supermarket itself, on selling uh, what is for, um, where it and so by doing so, so this is basically outsourced uh, including um, the, the service, the monitoring, the, op op the management so that the supermarket is really benefiting from the very latest technology from highest energy efficiency with a performance guarantee and doesn't have to find it up front uh, that equipment because it's done on a leasing basis. It's coupled with a software and digital services obviously controlled uh, remotely. So huge job to, to remove hurdles and to ease the way towards um, highest efficiency, um, low GWP uh, refrigeration uh, technologies such as CO2 for example. And that was the last uh, slide of my presentation. I hope it worked well and people could see it. Um, and uh, happy to answer any questions, of course. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrea. Yes, people could see it. Uh, okay, from here. Uh, and Agenias online, our colleague has started sharing as well so that the presenters can, can see. Sorry that you couldn't do it before. It was very interesting to see both the presentation in terms of technology, CO2, as you mentioned, but also the whole system approach that uh, companies like Danfoss are, are, are promoting and supporting um, supermarkets, for example, to, to move towards. So thank you so much, Andrea. And now we will change continent again. We continue our, our world tour and we go back to Latin America, but this time to Colombia. And this is Thermotar company. Uh, so they have recorded a video <coughs> Uh, for the purpose uh, of this presentation of this uh, session and uh, you will see the presentation now uh, Thermotar in particular uh, has a rooftop uh, application so you will see again a different type uh, of, uh, of uh, products being developed Thank you so much for being in this presentation. It's a pleasure to be showing you this study case in this COP28. We're going to talk about a good project that we have implemented in Colombia. And this study case is about centralized air conditioning with a natural refrigerant, in this case with R290. This presentation I am going to make with the engineer Francisco Charut. Francisco is responsible of the project in the Motar company. Motar is the company that produces these systems. This project was approved by multilateral fund of Montreal Protocol, and the agency GDP was supported in the technical aspect. It should be noted that Thermotar was a company that has committed in reduce the use of the refrigerant gases with DWP and ODP. Before beginning all about this study case, I would like to comment how Colombia to face the natural refrigerants that are using different technologies. Colombia has been working with the natural refrigerant for more than eight years, bearing achievements and contribution from the Montreal Protocol of Climate Action. But the most important objective 
that looking for in this kind of a project is ensuring the safe handling of the natural requirements and good management of the risk associated with them in the recreation and air condition sector. Likewise, the aspect that we have always included in this implementing of this project are related to the designs, the standards, and the training of the services sector. For encouraging the technologies with the natural refrigerator, we have been working in the tax incentive. In a sense, all projects with the natural refrigerator have not only contributed to re recovery of the ozone layer, but have contributed to the reduction of the climate change. Projects related to the natural refrigerant produce the direct impact generated by the refrigerant with the other people and include potential for improvement in energy efficiency. So I am going to give the floor to Francisco. Francisco is in Go ahead, Francisco. Thank you, Edwin. Uh, I am here located at Terbatar. We are an air conditioning company established in 1978 for the sole purpose of developing and manufacturing high quality air conditioning systems for the Latin America and Caribbean uh, market. We are currently in, involving ourselves in the North America market. Uh, hopefully we can get in there with this R290 project. Um, I am located here in the safety cabin of uh, R290 line. We have designed a uh, safe operation and adherence to safety standards for handling and maintenance of these systems, but, uh, falling under ISO 5149 with the support of international consultants. Our systems have permitted design of the electrical box the condensing unit, which will avoid interaction between electrical components and refrigerant in the event of leakage. Our equipment currently is uh, set to be three to five tons fully, with a refrigerant charge limit not exceeding 1,500 grams. Our application of electronic control cards and ultrasonic sensors for micro leak detections are located in the evaporator unit, as well as the implementation of a pump down system in case of a leak detection, which will disable the compression phase. This will help us have a much safer uh, system. As I mentioned, I am in the uh, safety cabin, which you can see in the top left of uh, your screen. Uh, the whole production line has been developed from scratch, and it is based in three parts. Uh, the first part is the low risk, which is the welding, the heat and permitticity test, the equipment vacuum, followed by the high risk, which is the refrigerant charge and leak test, which, has, which will be done here. Uh, and then the, once these systems are approved, they, uh, they go out the line for uh, packaging. This uh, system uh, is not only uh, greener and safer uh, for the environment, but it is also much more higher quality than uh, other refrigerants. Uh, and we have a cabin group cell which can test systems with up to five tons, which you can see in the bottom left of your screen. We have tested with the ISO 16358-1, following their regulations when using a wet bulb temperature of 75 degrees and a dry bulb temperature of 95 degrees. And uh, these systems, to sum up, our uh, designs are brand new. They are made specifically for this refrigerant. We have a new manufacturing line to adapt to the refrigerant and the safety standards required. It's a system that is much more efficient, up, up to 30% more efficient than R410A, as you can see in the bottom left. We have also adapted to international standards in order to accomplish this project. Um, also, we are uh, working in the strengthening of the training and the training of technicians that work in installation and maintenance sector, maintenance sector given the uh, flammability of this refrigerant. That's why we are developing a support plan in order to make sure that the standards are followed. By doing so, we have an annual reduction of 238,000 uh, tons of CO2 equivalent in a, in a system that is much more efficient, it's greener, and it's safer for the planet. Edwin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Francisco. Uh, it, this was our presentation. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you. It almost felt as live. And uh, now we will be moving to uh, our guest from India, Mr. Yoganwa Singh Kushwa uh, from Subros. He's the head of the new technology development uh, in Subros Technical Center. And he will present particularly on the mobile air conditioning. Uh, please come to the floor and I'm opening your slides just now. Thank you, everyone. First of all, uh, thanks a lot uh, to the team for inviting us. Uh, so here we are uh, putting up one case study for thermal system for automotive application, particularly uh, keeping in mind Indian market. So before starting, I would like to uh, take a few moments to uh, introduce ourselves. So uh, I'm from Subros, a company established in 1985. In, it is the largest air conditioning and thermal product company in India. And it's a joint venture company between uh, Subros, India, Suzuki, Japan, and Denso, Japan. And then uh, we are in the integrated thermal product manufacturer for the automotive sector. And we make the thermal system for the car, bus, trucks, and refer railway. We do have uh, multiple locations, uh, uh, the manufacturing plant in India, Pan India presents. And uh, our market share is around 44% market of India is uh, uh, with us. And then uh, around 52% for the truck air conditioning, the market is available with us. So uh, this is the quick study about the thermal system market study and the improvement needs in India. So in India, around 16.5% uh, uh, this uh, cooling demand is from the mobile air conditioning sector and transport air conditioning sector basically, a passenger car as well as buses. And uh, total tonnage installed in India, uh, basically, if we see uh, here the number, so by the end of projection so that by end of 2038, 2038, passenger car stock will reach at a mark, mark of 158.5 million and bus stock will reach around 4.2 million. And similarly, the passenger car uh, that accounted around 13.5% of the total vehicle population and it is followed by the bus. And refugent demand is also increasing, like refugent demand will reach around 25,000 metric ton uh, in 2037-38 from 6,000 uh, metric ton which was there in 1718. And R134A and R407C, two refugent currently are in the use in India and their global warming potential everyone is aware like they are very uh, high like 1400 for 134A and 2000 for the 407C. And so total CO2 emission with current trend is estimated around 350 million metric ton uh, due to R134A. So that's a huge uh, amount. And most of the automobile basically they are currently using uh, R134A and 407C refugent and uh, both of them have global warming potential. And they need to be regulated for, the, uh, for achieving the fade down program as agreed under the Kigali amendment of Montreal Protocol. And so India is preparing uh, themselves uh, for uh, achieving those target. But with the current trend of refugee demand in India, it is very difficult to fade down HFC and therefore proper strategies and action would be needed. And because the uh, demand is increasing and then uh, fade down a parallel uh, thing which, is, uh, which already have started. And innovative technologies for utilizing low global warming potential refugee without compromising on energy efficiency and cooling capacity is needed. Uh, this is the, uh, just the journey and way forward, like uh, uh, particularly in India, 1985, we started an air conditioning system with CFG refrigerant R12. So, uh, Subros was the first company in India who started like manufacturing of the air conditioning for automobile sector. And 1985, uh, this was established and 1987, Montreal Protocol was ratified. So, just after the two-year establishment, 
द मैंडेट कैम लाइक आर ट्वेल्व नीड टू फेड आउट इट वॉज डिफिकल्ट टाइम फॉर दी कंपनी हु इन्वेस्टेड इन आर ट्वेल्व फैसिलिटी एंड देन दैट्स मॉनिटर प्रोटोकॉल रिक्वायरमेंट वाज देयर India became the party in 1992, and uh, we uh, basically Montreal Protocol uh, this was ratified, and uh, with the help of the uh, like uh, multilateral funds and then uh, government support from India side, uh, this air conditioning this target was set like by 2010, R12 need to be phased out from the mobile air conditioning system, but we achieved those target very fast, so eight year ahead. So in 2002. Uh, the complete system in the india they got uh, replaced from r12 to r134a moving forward again there was one another driver in european union so 2006 european union mac directive come and then uh, the sap gas regulation which asked for gwp less than 150 by 2015 so that was the regulation and with that again the rnd uh, people uh, in india they started working testing the alternate refrigerant and 2014 for our export uh, business we established the facility for air conditioning system compatible with hfo based refrigerant with hfo 1234 wire uh, there were lot of chen- uh, challenges were there and uh, still like uh, very small capacity got established to cater the export market and now with the 2016 kegali amendment again the focus is there to establish the facility either for hfo 1234 wire uh, based system or some other alternate So here uh, the R&D of Subros is uh, basically exploring the uh, natural refrigerant based air conditioning system uh, for the mobile air conditioning. So there are certain changes like uh, instead of evaporator we need a new heat exchanger, chiller and air cooler. Those are plate and plate heat exchangers. And so and then the condenser also uh, uh, we are going to have the new kind of condenser which will have less amount of refrigerant. so plate in plate uh, type of condenser and then uh, expansion valve is not the challenge compressor we need hermetically sealed uh, compressor because this uh, uh, natural refrigerant like propane they are uh, flammable sealing we want like permanent joint we do not want any joint which need to be like uh, operated in the field and there are certain uh, uh, changes in the refrigerant side also so we are working on the uh, refrigerant and this hose design also with low water permeability multi layer hose we will be working upon that so here it is rational uh, behind like uh, one of the, um, the natural refrigerant r290 so propane so and this can be utilized uh, as a refrigerant in automobile sector also a uh, molecular weight of uh, propane is almost half compared to 407c and 134a and its thermodynamic property is better than the 407c and uh, 134a which can be clearly seen uh, from this table like we can see the liquid specific heat of r290 2.81 so this is very higher and propane the concern is it is highly flammable and belong to a3 group according to asre standards but it can be used in sec- secondary uh, loop based cooling system in the automobile sector so this was the like uh, motivation like uh, thermal pro- uh, properties are much better than other refrigerant and then uh, if we use in secondary loop we can utilize propane into the automobile sector here is the approach like what we are doing we are putting on a smart dual secondary loop thermal system so approach it replace the simple vapor compression refrigeration cycle with a smart dual secondary loop based thermal system with the use of environment friendly refrigerant like r290 so here what is happening in the cabin side uh, we are putting the cabin air cooler uh, which are having like uh, chilled water circulating inside and then the air is exchanging the heat and uh, now electrification is also going on uh, parallelly in india also so uh, if there is battery pack the same chill water can go to battery pack to cool the uh, batteries also and uh, so this circuit is on the one side the other side is like condenser side so condenser side also we are putting liquid cool condenser so liquid cool condenser it is exchanging the heat uh, with the refrigerant and then uh, low temperature radiator there to reject the condenser heat into the atmosphere so with this uh, there is another uh, the major focus on the smart microprocessor based adaptive controller so because energy efficiency is also one of the uh, focus area so we are putting certain adaptive controller uh, methodology so that uh, need based uh, the water circulation will happen on the area where cooling is required so at the end uh, if we summarize like uh, the benefit of this system so environment friendly natural refrigerant r290 we can use 
safely because refrigerant quantity will be very less if we use dual loop or secondary loop. The both sides we are using like a water circuit. The overall quantity of refrigerant will be very less and fewer fitting and a smaller pipe size that can reduce the refrigerant charge quantity itself. And uh, when we are using the braid plate type heat exchanger at evaporator and condenser, so their volumes are uh, already like uh, on the very uh, uh, smaller side. So then quantity will get reduced and shorter length of pipe that will also uh, help to reduce the compressor work because the circulation of the refrigerant will happen in a small circuit and that will that is also helping the uh, reduction in the compressor energy. And battery cooling system in electrical system can be easily integrated by redirecting the coolant flow. So this is another advantage like in the electric vehicles and particularly in commercial buses and uh, uh, bigger applications, this can be easily implemented. And safety concern is there, but then uh, because the quantity is less and we can locate it at the safe place where the, uh, the overall temperature is less, uh, it can be implemented. And uh, there are certain uh, like advantage like less refrigerant quantity, coolant based efficient cooling and usage of cold stored energy. Even during the light charging stage, we can uh, store the uh, this cold energy and then that can be utilized at the uh, time of the operation. And it can be extended uh, for heating also. We can put the PTC element and then the uh, same coolant loop can be utilized for the heating. It will provide less noise, vibration and ha ha this uh, harshness into the cabin. And there will be overall cost advantage to end vehicle user. And uh, there are disadvantage like there will be addition of component and uh, there will be some impact on the lower coefficient of performance because uh, there are two level of energy uh, exchange happening but with the smart control and uh, need based uh, adaptive control we can further improve over that and then increased package size is one of the concern and for that uh, we are working on the innovative designs where overall size can be reduced so these are the certain point which we would like to highlight uh, the new development will require certain changes because uh, the drop-in solution uh, will not be possible like compressor so compressor we need to work for r290 based uh, compressor as such mechanically there are no uh, like concern but there will be certain customization required and the coolant cool condenser so uh, the plate heat exchanger type of condenser development will be required chiller already for the electrical people have developed the chiller but for the cabin cooling large size of chiller will be required uh, low temperature radiators will be uh, that which also again the customization are required accumulators again customization dryers are available txv there is no concern and uh, there will be certain uh, concept vehicle need to be demonstrated into the field and testing facility will need upgradation because r290 based testing facility at most of the places are not available and uh, the there will be development of the controllers uh, to compensate for the energy efficiency perspective and uh, to further enhance the energy efficiency requirement so that's that was it from our side thank you Thank you so much. Uh, the use of hydrocarbon in mobile air conditioning, it's been talked about for a long time. So if you manage to do it, particularly through the use of secondary loop, it will be great achievement. Um, we are now staying in South India and uh, we are going to Bangladesh and we will be connected uh, to uh, Walton, um, Mr. Sandeep Biswas. Uh, we will be presenting us also some R&D work uh, in, in uh, their company. And I'm asking my colleague Aginias to, to play the, uh, the slide. Uh, Mr. Biswas, please, we have only five minutes. So I know you have quite a long presentation. We can uh, probably provide it to those interested after that. So please try to stay to within five minutes. Thank you so much um, and welcome to you. Yes, we can hear you. The slides are not showing yet, but it's yeah. coming. You can maybe start introducing yourself and... Uh, I, I can see the slides. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, 
Sorry, we have difficulties seeing the we have difficulties seeing the slides. So maybe you can just uh, present, you know, following and and just uh, uh, apologies for it. But if you can present the the rest uh, of of your presentation, uh, knowing that the slides are having difficulties being shown. So yeah. Please go ahead. Yes, yes, please continue. And 
project, we have uh, we have uh, improvised our production lines. Like we are doing the illustrating areas, and uh, also uh, we have implemented ventilation system. That's another one. So we have as uh, as central uh, our six hundred supply implementation and safety orders. Uh, so with these uh, projects, uh, we have uh, we have reduced around uh, two thirty uh, two thirty metric ton of HFC uh, every year, and uh, you know which is equivalent to uh, more than three hundred thousand emissions. So right now we are working in a, a project in the, uh, for the air conditioner, for uh, HVAC two. And uh, in this project, uh, we have uh, we have developed uh, one ton and then one point five ton. And it's taking up twelve thousand BTU and eighteen thousand BTU. We we have developed two in the in the level level R nine zero repeater and above this level like two ton. Uh, we have we have developed with R thirty two repeaters. Uh, these projects have uh, the five miles. With that, uh, we have a whole month to get the many good input time. Uh, you know, we will use the R22 uh, around 222 metric tons, and uh, which is equivalent to 12, 12, 40 tons uh, at the end of this term. So. And the big, uh, overall, this project started is around like 24 or 80 tons production. Uh, so uh, we are we are the major contributor of this project. So we are uh, continuously as of the month our sales model is growing. So once we launch this aircraft to be in the market, uh, hopefully the what we can we can we can sell more repeaters and. Uh, we have to look for the environment as well. So, so, yeah, we are trying. And after this project, we have uh, upgraded and, uh, our all the production lines, our testing systems, and uh, uh, we have also developed uh, our uh, central gas grid. And we can in this. Things we have done with the micro channel, micro channel condenser that is a very uh, highly efficient air condition or they can to improve the uh, to improve the efficiency of the air condition. Some air represent this aircraft block. Working to uh, to keep in mind that we have to keep the environment safe and based on that we are always trying to develop the products that is uh, energy efficient and also environment friendly. On the basis of that we have, we have developed a package 9 and we are using that in our air conditioner which reduces the uh, uh, consumption of refrigerant also to increase the efficiency of the air conditioner which which will help to reduce the uh, reduce the consumption of air, air. and under <coughs> project of S sorry, I, I think we will have to wrap up. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, <coughs> sir. I think we will have to wrap up quickly. Okay, because we we having difficulties with the uh, the slides and uh, yeah, please and the connection is not very good. Sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, under this uh, project, uh, we have developed uh, our uh, pipeline pipeline air conditioner as well. Uh, uh, as you can see, the COP is around uh, uh, five point in one for our air conditioner, whereas our other competitor is. Uh, from the other competitors, we have the lock fuels gap regarding the like the nearest the our competitors that is 4.4. So what we are quite ahead on this uh, particular uh, sections and we are continuously working to 
reduce our uh, energy consumption and to increase the efficiency of the product as well as to uh, improve the environment. Really? Some targets Which one? reduce the uh, uh, energy consumption and also our team is always working on it. So that's from my side. Uh, if you have anything, uh, I, I, I would be very happy to answer yeah. your questions. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, and yeah, we'll share the, the slides as well. Uh, finishing with China, with uh, Asia, we will move to, to China again. And uh, my apologies that we are a little bit running late. Uh, and uh, we will basically uh, hear from Mr. Do. Um, we'll present the, the situation in. in China really no okay yeah okay so he has uh, he has actually uh, recorded uh, his presentation so we'll share as well uh, good thank you so I will just play uh, then a final presentation that was prepared by Mabe uh, Mabe from Mexico and you will see that it's uh, quite interesting uh, in the, also in looking at the corporate social responsibility that they have uh, uh, worked on. That's the last one we will show, and then we will close the event. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for inviting us to be part of this privilege panel. Uh, allow me to start with saying that Mavi is a Mexican company with a history of over 76 years in the home appliance sector. We have presence in over 75 countries with 17 industrial plants one technological development center and over 24,000 employees worldwide, making Mave the leading home appliance company in Latin America. At Mave, we are committed to our responsibility to contribute to the construction of a sustainable future. We have established a path through which we continuously innovate a way of working to maximize the use of materials, water, and energy while driving a sustained reduction in our carbon footprint. So we have accomplished this through our corporate sustainability model through which we manage our performance with a triple impact focus, governance, environmental performance, and social well-being. Within the environmental component of our sustainability model, we have identified four priorities. The first one would be emissions, energy, water, and materials. So allow me to present three projects as examples of what we have developed as part of these priorities. So before I present them, I would like to share a premise under which we have based these projects. This premise is level playing field. So it involves regional integration to achieve large scale results that not only impact the industry but also the national agendas. Our first project relates to what can be achieved through collaboration between organizations, governments, and the private sector. For medical countries, in our sustainability collaboration project, we have identified the objective was to eliminate the use of HFC 134A refrigerants to introduce R600 gas in the manufacturing of our refrigerators. We began voluntarily with the conversion at our plant located in Manizales, Colombia followed by our plant in Celaya, Mexico, or I simply concluded, concluded at our plant in San Luis, Argentina, with the support of UNIDO. Level this plate. conversion allows us to avoid the emission of 240,000 tons of CO2 equivalent, reducing the potential global warming effect by 98%, and improving the energy efficiency of our refrigerators by up to 25%. It's essential to highlight that this achievement would have been possible without the support of UNDP, whose technical and human assistant allows the project to become a global success story. So 
Continuing with the presentation of our project, allow me to present the project that we developed to address energy efficiency. This project aims to promote efficient products and ensure their accessibility to a greater number of Latin American families. So we work with UN Environment to create a model that enables states to save energy by replacing five product categories with efficient equipment. Refrigerators, air conditioners, lighting, motor, and transformers. So the results so far include savings for states in electrical infrastructure creation and maintenance, as well as savings for families through lower electricity bills, thanks to the introduction of mandatory standards in countries where there was no existing infrastructure for standardization and conformity assessments, such successful cases could be found in Costa Rica, Panama, and El Salvador. Continuing with the presentation of our projects, I would like to present our efforts focused on materials usage. We are working to establish a circular production model based on practices like eco-design and extended producer responsibility to maximize the utilization of materials, parts, and components in our products. So regarding extended producer responsibility, we have been collaborating with seven countries in the Latin American region to promote the creation of standards and regulations that based on the principle of graduality encourage coordinated actions among all the stakeholders. So we believe that this is a matter of extended responsibility, not exclusive to producers, but also to states whose, whose success from our perspectives depends on the gradual and harmonized approach across these regions. Last but not least, regarding our social contribution, we want to share the results achieved so far through our refugee inclusion program. In 2018, we initiated the project with the United Nations Refugee Agency in Mexico, together with the Mexican Commission for Refugee Aid at the state of Coahuila, Mexico. Through this project, we have successfully integrated more than 300 refugees in our washers manufacturer plant located in Saltillo, Mexico, providing them with employment, access to education, housing, and a second chance to make a new life. This model has been a success, with over 600 companies joining the integration model. It has been recognized by the High Commissioner who stated that the Mexican model would be presented at the upcoming World Refugee Forum in December in Geneva, Switzerland. So, in conclusion, allow me to emphasize that we need a regional approach to be able to amplify the results of the projects I just presented, which will not only allow a large-scale outcome, but it will also provide a significant opportunity to contribute to the integration of Latin America through its strengths. Thank you very much. Thank you. This will uh, be the last presentation um, that, that we, we can play. Um, I think we can stay here if you have any question for our presenters. Thank you so much uh, for them to come and, and present, come from far, and uh, very interesting presentations. Uh, and um, yeah, please stay for the following events uh, with GIZ uh, uh, starting just now. Uh, apologies for the long, uh, for the delay. Thank you for our colleagues and all the presenters online as well for their patience and for the very interesting presentations. Bye-bye.